Tan, 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 tan. We change a little bit the format today. We will have uh, right now Anthony Icon from Australia. So I'm so happy to just reconnect with Aerobic 5 because everything is going to be so funny today. I mean, because uh, we know that Anthony just uh, did uh, many, many things. Uh, it's a huge star around the world with choreographies and many other things we will check today. And of course, uh, following his career of uh, aerobic competitor. Entonces tenemos la oportunidad de conectar hoy con uh, Anthony Aiken uh, de Australia, que le vamos a dar ahora justo la bienvenida para conectar directamente ya con él. Vamos a ver si conectamos vía París, Los Ángeles. Paris, Los Angeles. Uh, hello, Anthony. <laughs> hello, Joe. How are you? Good, good. Just uh, nice uh, to see that uh, everything is working good and uh, just to reconnect because long time ago, I think the last time was in Australia, we saw each other. I oh, yeah. <laughs> at, the, at the aerobics camp with Patsy. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to convince Patsy because she was like, oh my God, it's impossible to do choreography like this. <laughs> I think like everybody's saying the same, you know, like uh, no choreography at all. Uh, anyway, I'm there, I'm there. You're so good, Joe, because you remember <laughs> all the routines. I have no idea. I'm trying, I'm trying. And you know, like now I was like checking everything. So uh, it will be so much fun because I could get something that you will be... Later I will send you everything, so you have everything. <laughs> so how, you doing? how is everything there in the United States? Because I know that uh, it's like hard stuff, so how is yeah. it uh, doing? It's... Um, I mean, myself and my husband, I got married a couple of years ago. We moved to Los Congratulations. Angeles. Congratulations. Thank you. I was going we, to say that. <laughs> <laughs> we, we moved to Los Angeles at the end of last year. Mm -hmm. and. It wasn't the best timing to move here because as soon as we came, then coronavirus started and then since then all the protests and the riots. So it's been a really um, tense time in America. The energy here is just really, really um, awful at the moment, but hopeful for how it's going to turn out, I think, in a few months' time. So we're staying really hopeful and I hope the next, the next year and the year after that gets a bit more positive than what it's been for us. So far. Well, well, you know, like when it starts like this bad, you know, like at the end it should be like crazy. Yes. So uh, we definitely let's translate a little, translate a little because we have uh, different people from around the world. Eh, sencillamente, Anthony nos está comentando de que eh, él y su marido, porque se casaron hace hace eh, próximamente un año, se movieron a Estados Unidos, a Los Ángeles, y bueno, pues al moverse allí, pues empezó toda la problemática del coronavirus y, y bueno, pues toda la problemática que estamos viendo hoy en día, ¿no? We have uh, an amazing, uh, well, career, uh, but it was, it was weird. And not even, I'm not going to say <laughs> short because it was weird because suddenly we know uh, Anthony Eichern, suddenly uh, most of the people knows you when you were over 18, but um, you start a long time ago. When did you start aerobics? I started when I was 14 at my high school. I did gymnastics a long time before that and track and field and swimming and all of those things. But I started at my school, my high school, when I was 14. And I was in a, it was me and a team of 11 girls. And I was the, <laughs> the 12th <Yoo>! person. <laughs> And I was like, I was like this skinny. Anthony, Anthony empezó cuando tenía 14 años con un grupo de 11 chicas. Um, how, how did you say that you were, how, how like this? Uh, this skinny. I, I looked like. <laughs> okay. Because now we go, I'm going to play like this, so like this is easier. Let's going to see Anthony. This is the first one I, I had. Finally, I got it. So you'll be like, oh my God. Uh, 98 before you broke uh, your ankle, but was semi-final, so I think you will love uh, this one. Oh Let's my goodness. <laughs> skinny, skinny. <laughs> oh, I'm so nervous. Fine. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I saw it this morning. You texted me. I've never seen this. Effects everywhere. I didn't remember that you were so skinny. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I had a video this morning, uh, Emanuela sent me. Uh, thanks and big kisses to Emanuela Vati from Italy. So I was like, oh my God, you know, because um, it was, uh, uh, I remember even, you know, like uh, it, it was a long time ago. It was like, uh, well, uh, 22 years ago. I can remember that watching you and saying, wow, you know, like uh, he's really good. And watching you that you injured on, on finals and, and, and when you were doing the switch and then the, the, the Shishunova. Yeah. And, and you broke your ankle. So tell me what was going on? What happened in your mind after like uh, you injured? And, and, and what well, we'll see that later you come and, and you come bigger, stronger and better. Yeah. Hey, do you, you remember that competition where all the kids with the guns came? Like, the, do you remember the... In Brazil, oh, oh, yeah, yeah. and with, so I, I remember hiding under the chair, and there's like I remember when gosh. I was competing that Alba go around to to watch me from the audience, yeah. and she was like uh, stuck with a guy that uh, you know put a gun on the on, he, on her head, and, and yeah. she didn't tell me anything, but she was like, and I was like, but what happened? No, no, I will tell you later. I was like competing, so. <laughs> <laughs> so for me, that competition. That was in this, it happened after the semi-finals and then in the finals, it was my first time overseas. I was only 16. I didn't really know anybody. So when I went on in the finals, I was just like, <laughs> like in my head and my ankle broke and it was just awful. So I think it was just young and scared and that whole trip was traumatic. Because it, it, it was the first international competition that you were doing? Yes, mm. first time doing the open division too because i was just a junior mm -hmm. and then i went from junior to being against you which is very <laughs> scary <laughs> i love it <laughs> and you were like you were my idol so it was like i was just this nervous little skinny kid yeah but you know like nobody knows that but uh, i remember that when i was going to finals i was doing the double twist to push up and and suddenly i was completely lost and falling on my back so I was doing one and a half and falling on my back and just, bah! and people was like, ah, but you know, like, and they're like, no, no. And suddenly in the finals, I was doing it and I did it well, but then I was like the one impressed. I was like trying to do it falling. I was like, oh my God, you know, like, but suddenly oh. after you broke your ankle, you come yeah. uh, next year and suddenly we had uh, very good results because uh, we, well, you start participating in FIG and also yeah. IIC and uh, it, it worked really good. Yeah. I did, I, I broke my ankle, had a rest, and then I, I trained properly, like I started to train hard, finally, and competed a, a really good year that year with no injuries or distractions or anything like that. And why, why you decide to do the routine you did? What was your inspiration? 
to you. Because I have to tell you that you were my inspiration also. Oh, thanks, Joe. You're welcome. Did you, thanks to you. Did you see, you know that movie, it was called um, Blade or Blade Runner? Blade. Blade. Yeah. I, I remember going to the movies and I loved it. And that song was in there. And I thought, oh, that would be such a great, great I song. You... A bit of a vampire theme. I remember that I was in uh, FIG and I saw you competing and I was like, I want that, you know, it was like, oh my God, because I, I broke the knee, you know, like in that yeah. so it was like, oh my God, I and if you, if you, if you, if you remember in 2000, I came with a routine that was Zeus that I really loved from Hercules, the story of Hercules, Hercules, yeah. so I did. but I used the background of uh, Blade because, you know, like it was like, I want, I want to do something like you, you were doing oh. because it was so inspiring. Yeah, yeah it's true. I'm not lying. <laughs> oh, that's and, awesome. Um, and then it came, uh, you know, like, uh, because I, I thought that it was, like, really inspiring. I, uh, I, I found that, uh, well, uh, you, you could get, like, a better score for me. It was, like, really good uh, routine. Uh, it, it was, like, oh, my God, everybody wants to be, like, that guy, you know, like, uh, because I, I promise, you know, like, you could do the things and it was so easy to, to watch and, and think that this is so easy for him, you know, like, he can put a finger in his nose and do it. <laughs> like, if nothing happens, uh, let's, let's, let's gonna check it because uh, even we, we just saw it uh, on because we just posted because we found it like one month ago. Let's gonna see, like, for the people that uh, didn't know that or, or they don't remember this choreography because I think for me it's one of the best. <laughs> Australia, please welcome Anthony Iken. Talk about pressure, folks. He just turned 18 years old and is probably the most competitive <laughs> so competition. He just graduated from high school. Now, Anthony has not only a beautiful stratagem, probably the only vertical high leg kick in the competition. You'll see when we get there. I'll point him out to you. He won the silver medal at the age of 16 in the Australian National Championships, and last year, he won the national title at the age of 17. Now watch his high leg kick. His spine is straight, his ankle is behind his ear, directly over his ankle is behind his ear. Rare to see, very flexible. It's the most difficult kick to do in this competition. You know, he's from a very talented family as well. He has two older brothers, one which is a professional rugby player back in Australia, and another brother is about to release an album for Universal Records. <laughs> now, if we I love the roll. We love the roll through. Beautiful balances. Kicks just look so easy for him. Right, and when you're flexible like that, you usually and you again. suffer. And he's doing a great job at balancing that time strength. We repeat, so. <laughs> it's a little harder to control your body. He's got long limbs. He's doing a great job. <laughs> he loved the sport, and being only 18, he will be around for a long time. Oh, the sport is for Australia. I think I have to tell you that uh, I, I, I watched this routine like a thousand times. Suddenly, you know, like you disappear from uh, internet because, you know, like we could uh, find it uh, like a long time ago now from uh, Curcio <laughs> Bufacci also that uh, many thanks for uh, bringing us the story of aerobics alive. Um, <laughs> But this routine, it was in a, in a moment that the, the technical regulations, you could repeat elements and the elements from uh, sit through, like going and coming back, it was really easy. Yeah. So this routine was easy for you? Yes, no, uh, because it seems like really easy, you know, like... Uh, yeah, it was. And I, I knew that, that it was a D. I think they scored the roll through, back through was a D. And I knew it was really easy for me to do. So I thought, I'm going to do three of them. <laughs> And he's like, okay, forget about this because I'm <laughs> I, um, I agree with uh, Curcio that we were saying, uh, Curcio and Stefan Bartolomé, 
uh, he was saying that you were Mr. Kicks also, so it's not only me. I think uh, <laughs> you had the best kicks ever I saw ever in uh, in Arabic. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. And um, suddenly, um, from from '99, you you go to uh, 2000, and uh, suddenly from 2000, don't worry, we have still there. Uh, you compete again. You compete only in IIA, uh, in IIC only. I think yeah. so. Yeah. And what, what's happened? Because uh, after that, I, uh, we, we stopped hearing about uh, Anthony. What's happening? What is happening yeah. in your mind? And, and what is going on with aerobics? I think, you know, after the video that you just showed, I remember getting some feedback from the judges. And one of the judges said to me, you need to go to dance class. If you go to dance class and you move a little bit better, you will you will have a higher score or something like that and so after after that competition i that's when i started dance classes and i fell i fell in love with dancing as well so it became up until that point my whole focus was aerobics and then i started dance classes and i started to love dancing too the difference is i was when I was just doing aerobics, I was hanging out with athletes and sports-minded people, whereas dancers are crazy and they love to party and drink lots and, you know, it's, it's much more free and things like that. And I had just turned 18. So it was like balancing partying, training, dancing, aerobics, like all of these things. And I don't think it worked really well. And I moved, I moved from my hometown down to Sydney mm -hmm. and... I kind of got caught up in just Sydney and the bright lights and so young and yeah. because did you think that uh, changed a lot from the time you start aerobics because I remember I remember really well the party in uh, Brazil crazy <laughs> and then how FIG starts working with kids like this I don't know if you if you reach the moment that uh, uh, not, not only FIG, but also FISAF, uh, that starts introducing uh, kids on the competitions. I don't know, if, not only with the party, because we know they spend a really good time, but also in competitions. Did you think that changed a lot because of introducing like kids and, and, and youth people into competitions? Because before uh, we could see that uh, people from 16 or like this were competing, but in adults. Yeah. Right. Do you think that changed a lot that maybe also like, uh, because I know like many people thought that, you know, like this is not even me, this is not the way we, 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 we spend before, you know, like in, in yeah. competition. So that was maybe one thing that uh, just uh, pushed you to, okay, not to go there anymore. Yeah, I think, it, I think it did. And it was also the time when fig, you could only do fig, you couldn't do five stuff. Oh, yeah. Remember it started to get really yeah. difficult for competitors, but I was, I used to love doing fig and then ANAC and then FISAF and changing the routine every time. Yeah. I used to love that. And then it became, you had to choose. Yeah. And I don't know, it just changed for me. And I loved, I really did. It wasn't, I loved competing, but I, just as much as I loved aerobics, I fell in love with dancing and all the opportunities that came in the world of dance. For me as well, so it was really hard to juggle both. Yeah. Uh, big kisses to Claudia because he's saying I like your I like so much your charisma. <laughs> She's like, <laughs> Hello. champions are coming back to see how oh. it's working. Uh, little <laughs> translation, fast translation for people that don't understand English. Uh, um, Anthony empezó con 18, a 16 años, compitió en Brasil en FISAF por primera vez que se rompió el tobillo. Volvió en 99 donde vimos la coreografía que estaba basada en la película de Blade. Y a partir de allí vemos que Anthony desaparece un poco del contexto de la aeróbica. Y lo que vemos es que, bueno, empieza a hacer clases de danza y es lo que le motiva a continuar hacia ese camino y no hacia la aeróbica. También la introducción de los niños o, o, o edades más prematuras antes de los 18 años en las competiciones de aeróbic y también, bueno, pues que empiezan a clausurar el poder competir en diferentes federaciones como antes hacíamos, como competíamos en, en EAF, en FIC, en FISAC 
y bueno, entra ese, esa problemática de confederaciones, ¿no? Like, uh, that was a good, a good thing because uh, as soon as we were competing uh, in different competitions, it was a challenge that you were competing in IAF doing 32 counts and then coming to FISAF and doing different way and then FIG. And suddenly the, the rule of the law of, of stopping competing with uh, federations that are not having the same uh, code of points as FIG. Um, yeah. I think uh, cut a lot of uh, athletes and, and, and they disappear because of that also, because after having maybe four championships or uh, four world championships or four international championships during the year, Claudio Franzen also there. <laughs> Claudio. <laughs> You're <guys> the same. <laughs> I, I love you, Claudio. Claudio. He looks the same. Uh, <laughs> then me also, like, it was challenging to change the routine in, in, in few times. And suddenly you were competing in less than a month in two different competitions and you had to, to improve a lot to, to, yeah. to compete in one and the other one. Uh, yeah, like, even talking to you, like, comes to my mind, like, uh, memories, you know, like, it was challenging. You compete in 2000, and uh, the only track I know is uh, that you compete in the United States, and uh, doesn't well that good that it was in 99. Yeah. But um, oh, no. what do you remember from that routine? The, you mean the 2000 IAS? Uh, AIC in the United States. OK, let's going to check. Later we oh. talk. <laughs> oh, well, well, well. Sorry, I have to find it because I have it almost ready, but... From Venezuela, it's Paulo. From Venezuela, Paulo Gomez. You decide to do a kind of Mozart from Blade. Nothing to do the same different completely uh, routine uh, that has to be with uh, classical music, maybe because of FIG. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know what you're going to say. I don't know what you're going to say. Ladies and gentlemen, we continue. Please welcome my next competitor from Argentina. No, not this one. I think coming. It's coming. <laughs> Claudio. Love you, Claudio. God. Well, I'm there. Wait a second. One minute. Uh, we have a video from. Um, we have video from uh, United States. So it's one uh, year that you appear there, and suddenly, from becoming the third position, uh, you come yep. with a choreography that it's uh, based on Mozart or something. Like oh yeah, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. That I remember. <laughs> yeah. And that uh, is suddenly, it, it was the last year you were competing. Yeah, except for like 10 years later in mixed pairs. Yeah. We have it also. <laughs> but that, no, really. I that, have um, everything. <laughs> that routine was, Paolo did that one. Okay. Paolo in Japan. So I went to Japan um, and worked with Paolo for Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome that our next Let's go to From Australia, Anthony Iken. I think you didn't saw that one. Tom. <laughs> I've never seen it. <laughs> Oh my goodness, the blonde, the blonde hair. <laughs> <laughs> Completely different, wait. Oh. I hate you, you know that. <laughs>
from Australia, Anthony Aiken. <laughs> Being I couldn't even hear Yuriko like, hey! <laughs> so, uh, I love, I, I, I found like these videos like a short time ago, but uh, oh. so having so much fun to watch it. So suddenly after that, your life changed a lot because um, later I will send it to you also because uh, we'll show a little. What is happening in your mind when you stop uh, competing and then suddenly you get into one of the best uh, TV programs in Australia? Yeah, I, um, I think actually after that, I moved to Paris to do the Moulin Rouge before I got into the show. I have so to tell there. the people that you were there, yes. Big kisses to Marcella Lopez, also there. Ah, <laughs> uh, Marcella. Oh my God, my idol. You and her are my idol. Um, but yeah, I went from that competition, I was still dancing and then moved to Paris to do the Moulin Rouge. So it was a year living there and I, I finished that because I could have stayed on longer there, but it was the same show 12 times a week and it was just like groundhog day of exactly the same thing even i loved it and i it was the best year of my life but it was time to do something else i wanted to do more with my dancing mm -hmm. and then i so came I, back to australia so you you went back to australia and 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 suddenly uh i don't know how you do it you you just uh maybe apply to to get into one uh like how you say like um Casting, no? Uh, yeah. And, and yeah. suddenly you, you, you are accepted in, uh, so you think you can dance Australia? Yeah. So we did. I, I, I think I was home in Australia after Paris for like one week. And then this audition came up for a TV show in Australia. And I'm a yes person. So I was just like, well, of course I'm going to audition. It's, this sounds fun. But we didn't know how big it would be. We knew it was big in America, but we didn't know if Australia would like it. So I did the audition process and it, it was really successful for me and they kept cutting out more people, more people, and I just kept staying in the, in the cut of dancers. So I made the top 20, which was the show. And that, that really um, changed my life in Australia because it was, it was a really, really popular, successful TV show. Because, because I... I, I... I know that when we were in Australia, I could see like uh, what is going on. Later on, uh, we had something uh, similar in Spain and we could see that it was like huge. But uh, the, 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 the most incredible thing, even I know you for a long time, uh, it was that I was surprised like watching like what you were doing. I think like the first time I saw you doing something different, it was kind of a catwalk of modeling or something like this. And I was like, <laughs> I was like shocked. And suddenly, let's go show to the people, you know, because uh, maybe they don't uh, know, but... Um... <laughs> I really, you know, want this a lot. And I love this, so it's what I do, it's what I love doing. You're brilliant. <laughs> you've got beautiful technique, you've got beautiful feel. Loved it, loved it, loved it. You know what this is? It's made my day, it's made my year, it's made my life, I'm so excited. I know this is not your bag, but you handle it really well. It's a yes for me. This performance was probably hey. the hardest I've ever had to do. A standing ovation, what more can I ask for from the judges after such a huge week? It was awesome. Anthony. Yes. When you're up there on stage, it's really hard, it's really nerve wracking. But I'm going to look back on this in the end and go, wow, great job. It's a very enjoyable routine. I love the 70s. That's the routine tonight that popped. Remember why you're in it. And that's the moment of why I love it and why I will do it forever. I think you're a phenomenal dancer. This whole experience means so much to me. I'm having the best time of my life. Every day brings me new challenges and so much joy. And I really could live. The more 
interesting, incredible thing. Uh, I was saying, and people, if you want to see like the whole video, just let me know and we will post it. But you can find Anthony Icon, and uh, so you think you can dance in Australia, you will find it. Um, you could see that I was so flashed because I, I, I knew you from aerobics and that you were so good, so flexible, so strong and like this, but suddenly I didn't imagine about all the flicks and tricks that you were doing, but also that you get into there. And when I saw several uh, of the dances, you had to do everything, Claudia Gomez, wow. You have to do everything, <laughs> dancing, ballroom dancing. Uh, of course, it, it's like a big show and you had to do everything. And yeah. how it's finished? Because I know that from there, like the doors just open and, and you start working worldwide and um, getting a huge success yeah. about that. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it, well, it's firstly in Australia, it's, it opened opportunity up for dancers. It made dance really popular for, for bookings and for, for different events coming up. And the, the people that were on that show, we just started to get all of these extra work opportunities, which was great. But then separate to that, it made dance so big in Australia that we got to use our skills to fly all over Australia and over the world to teach and to inspire and things like that. So that was, that was something really beautiful out of it as well. It opened up so many doors to pass on our love and knowledge to all the young ones coming up. So it was, it was just awesome. <laughs> so, so you start like finding uh, new friends, uh, new partners, dance partners. So it's a completely different way because you were doing everything individually. So you were playing individual uh, when you were doing aerobics. Yeah. Of course, like uh, I think like you and me, like uh, big kisses to, to people from Australia, from our competitors there. Of course, to Patsy Tierney that uh, we have very good uh, <laughs> memories with her. Uh, you have to tell her that we have to. Oh, I will. She has to be Don't there one day. I'll tell her today. Uh, because, you know, like a long time ago. And suddenly, um, also, uh, you start moving into a dance and uh, you finish into a, a, you, well, creating your own program because you have your shaky dance. Yeah. Shake it, shake up. I can shake it. I can shake it. Yeah, I think, I think um, what was really nice about the dance industry is there was lots of Compared to aerobics, I think from my experience, I don't know about everybody else's, but from my experience, there was a lot more money to be made in dance in Australia than there was for aerobics. So I, I found all these avenues to use the success of the TV show to turn it into businesses and to, to finally make some money from it all, um, which was awesome. And one of the things that I did was the dance fitness the dance fitness DVD called I Can Shake It. The only, um, the only negative looking back about that is I released this big DVD right when DVDs were <laughs> on the oh. way out. <laughs> so I put all this money into like, I think I've got thousands of DVDs in my garage of this thing and no one has DVDs anymore. <laughs> <laughs> because I remember that uh, when we were in Australia, we were having the camp. I remember that uh, you teach a class, also I teach some classes there, and, yeah. uh, and we were having so much fun. But suddenly, it's like a kind of tricky, because one thing that you said that uh, it's true, is that um, and yesterday or two days ago, somebody, uh, um, Fred Farweather, uh, Brett Farweather, that uh, he will be like uh, with us next week, uh, yeah. He was telling me, but you know, like, uh, you are the king of aerobics, you won everything and like this, uh, you are like, uh, like, uh, living really well from aerobics. And I said, like, no, like, uh, from aerobics, I don't know if, if it's because uh, it's not right now anymore on TV. It's not like that memorable that we, we did, uh, like, long time ago with uh, the Crystal uh, in the United States, that it was like a big show on TV yeah. and like this. Um, you you saw clearly that uh, that from aerobics it, it was so difficult to to keep on working and keep on uh, uh, surviving. Yeah. You went to to dance and completely change. And even you did like this uh, workout and like this. Um, you start living from uh, dancing. Yeah. Not not you, but creating creating also choreographies because I know that uh, you just move also to to Las Vegas to to have some choreographies there. Of course, yeah. you play a lot of things. Uh, <laughs> Claudio Gómez, Anthony habla con su cuerpo. Eso es la, 
Um, Claudia is saying that uh, the best of uh, gymnast of aerobic is that you can speak with your body. So, and even more uh, coming from dancing. So, uh, like your movement was like <laughs> incredible. But anyway, oh, um, thank you. My thing, uh, Claudia's one. Uh, <laughs> so you just start moving around and 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 leaving from from dancing. That uh, yeah. was completely different from aerobics. No. Yeah. yeah. And and I. I really loved dancing as well. It was, and that's that's why I think I I did all those competitions at the start, and then I took that big break was because I didn't stop performing or training in something. I just loved both things, and it was really hard because dance was where the money was for me. So for me to be able to live and successfully I, I had to put more of my en energy into the dance side of it but i love them just as much as each other and one question that was uh, coming from cursio Rufachi, that uh, of course we were talking about uh, the videos and you um he asked me uh bacio a uh, cursio uh, he <laughs> asked me why do you come back in 2010 12 12 Yeah, 2012. Why, why, why did you come back to aerobics? Because people doesn't know, maybe. But uh, suddenly, Anthony Aiken appears internationally. I lost that competition because you know, I would be there. Uh, suddenly, <laughs> Anthony come back and, uh, well, you're doing a mixed pair with Casey Scully. Yeah, yeah. I, um, I felt like I really wanted to do something new again and I wanted to train and I missed... Dancing is hard and it's exciting and you still get the performing thing, but I, I really miss training for something for like nine months to perfect this one thing and then try your best to win. I miss that competition side of it. So I was 32 at the time and I just thought, why not? And I think as you get, maybe as I got older, I rather than just do it by myself i wanted to do it with somebody to share the experience with somebody i don't know it was just a a different headspace so i i asked cassie scully and at first she was like you're six foot three and she's like five foot one <laughs> she's like this isn't gonna work and then we just we just started having fun and training and we found we found a way to make it work like I wouldn't jump as high because there's no way she could get that same height. So, and vice versa on other things, I had to be faster because she's such a little like terror. So it was, <laughs> yeah, we just found, we found a way to make it work. Because it worked really well because finally uh, you went to, to, to FISAV uh, World Championships and, and you got the goal in the mixed pair. Yeah. And uh, I think that one thing that we lost, uh, that I love from this routine, is that um, you could express the way you want, doesn't matter what the other thought about it. You know, like uh, doing a remix of, uh, uh, I think it was like an inspirational music also for many, many, many athletes in FISA because uh, later on, one year later, everybody was using Spice Girls. Yeah. But uh, at that moment, it was like a long time that people was not using Spice Girls. So suddenly you remix with Lady Gaga also and uh, you won the championships and suddenly it was a, a revolution, I think, uh, with the choreography in the music. Let's gonna see because I have it there also. This is the last one. <laughs> Promise. My kicks, oh, my yeah. kicks are the time. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right.
That's my favorite one. That's my favorite um, time on stage. I think like people doesn't understand because, uh, and this is not a bad thing, but from uh, when it came to gymnastics, we changed a lot the, the, the style of music and like this. And we were talking with different champions that uh, right now people is not having fun because it's so focused on the elements and not uh, having any mistake that you miss this, the show content and also like uh, how good uh, an athlete can spend uh, time on the stage because before it was like, I want to go there like this. Mm -hmm. And suddenly right now, the, the worst thing is that people doesn't want to go to stage because, you know, like it's, a, it's like a kind of a stress, like that big that people doesn't want to have fun. I saw this routine and even yeah. like I was uh, like focusing to, to see you because, you know, like it was uh, recorded from uh, far away and, and you could see like you are having so much fun and, and, and this allows yeah. you uh, to, to, to get excited to compete again, you know, like it's like, oh my God, I want to feel that again. You were yeah. saying that it was like so, um, so, so good to, to, to feel uh, this uh, eight, nine months training and go for the goal and goal and also like uh, finally had this result. How it worked doing mixed pair after, you know, like uh, competing like long time ago in individual, you went to mixed pair and maybe like this uh, helped you just to say, okay, it's enough, I have enough, or yeah. maybe you want for more? Uh... No, it was really, um, I think that routine for me, it's a com it was a combination of dance and aerobics all put into one and getting to do it with somebody else. So I think... It was, it was more about, yes, training for the nine months and competing and hopefully winning. And I think winning was just the perfect way for me to then go. I think I, I'm done with aerobics and I'm done with that experience. And I'm glad it was that routine and sharing the experience with someone else to say that was my last time on stage as an aerobics athlete. Um, but I, I still got to choreograph other people's routines and coach coach other people's routines and work with other people so I was still involved but for me that was the perfect way to say goodbye as a as a competitor for myself it was just yeah it was a really great year not thinking maybe to come back if there are master's division <laughs> <laughs> I love that we were talking about master's division and, and they were saying no because you can do this this and this they were like uh, do you know what is having 40 years and you know like <laughs> thinking that you know like yesterday I was doing my training of kicks training and you know like this morning was like oh my god but what did you do like, doing kicks? <laughs> so <laughs> Joe like, you will do it you will do masters <laughs> won't you you no will worries. you were Mr. Kicks not me I was so bad with kicks <laughs> so um finally uh so you you just uh, think that okay it's enough uh, maybe it was time also to get uh, focus on your real life and, and uh, you get married. So yeah. congratulations for that. And uh, it you. was so, so nice to, to hear about that. And of course, following, you know, like everything uh, with all the friends from Australia and you just moved to the United States. What do you think uh, about aerobics? Because you were in the 90s, you were in the 2000s, you have a big break that it was like kind of uh, tricky because uh, it remembers more or less like Alba, my partner, that, you know, like she stopped to have the babies and like this, and then she came back. Um, what, what is your thoughts? Uh, what are your thoughts about like when you start right now and, and maybe when you came back and, and right now? So what, is, what are the things? You passed for several uh, code of points, also for different federations. Tell me about, about your, your thoughts about uh, aerobics. Where do we go? If you like it, what you see right now or not? What is going yeah. on? Yeah. I, I see them. I watch FISAF and I watch FIG and they're like two different sports. It's like nothing complete, to do. nothing to do with each other. But I, it's not that I prefer one versus the other. I just watch them with different head spaces because I watch the fig routines and I'm like, I'm so glad I was in the 90s because I could not do any of those things that they do. That's, so I admire what they do. Their skill level is crazy. And I watch FISAP and then I love the fun they have on stage and the way that they can move their body and still dance and enjoy themselves. So I watch them 
very differently, but I still love them both. I don't really have a, a preference, but I do know that I'm glad I did aerobics when I did it as a big athlete because I think it would be really – you now you have to come pretty much straight out of gymnastics, like mm. high-level gymnastics to be able to do or to be competitive in that sport. But I, because, admire, I admire everybody. Because we were talking with uh, Kenichiro that uh, it was a big success before because uh, you had like 32 counts, push-ups, sit-ups, uh, kicks, and like this. So one thing that it was true that he was saying that uh, people was uh, involved in our sport because it was so easy to, to get accepted and, and to, to get on a stage and to compete because, you know, you only have to do a uh, few uh, things because uh, with two minutes and, and if you put that 32 counts, the push-ups, the sit-ups like this, at the end there was a little space to put uh, more elements. Right now, we've seen that the music reduced to... to little more than one minute so there is no big deal to explain or to tell a story because there is no time for that but also yeah. like with the amount of elements and transitions and uh, like the like high value talking about fig and then sally from uh FISA that also like the requires of uh, the quarters like this so it gets crazy i think like um i don't know if you agree like are really really difficult to to do a choreography right now that people is just uh, bored to see all the time the same because the value of elements and exercises are always the same. So people just decide to do always the same combinations, the same elements are like this. And yeah. people, uh, we were talking that there is no people watching the competitions. Uh, um, now uh, you, you ask to people, but why you don't go like this? And, and most of them saying that, well, this is not the sport I, I, I used to love. And, yeah. um, and suddenly we saw that in competitions there, there is no people, there is no sponsors, there is no people. Uh, one question, who did the music from Spice Girls? Who did it? Marco. Okay, so big kisses to Marco Manara. Marco! Oh my God, he's, he's helping us with uh, all the project right now. But I was like, I don't know if it was him, but you know, like it was a, yeah. a really great uh, version because I never heard this version before. So it was like, well, big kisses yeah. to Marco because always he's there. So for Thank sure you, he will say something. Um, um, you see, like uh, even with the music, we were finding, uh, trying to find like a masterpiece like you did. I think uh, uh, you did it perfectly in 99 because it was one routine that even I said to the people, yeah, uh, I, I always like choose like the best thing from everybody. And yeah. people doesn't know because you don't copy and you do the same. But anyway, it's a kind of inspiration. Like I said to Giovanna that when she was doing Cleopatra like, uh, next year, I was doing uh, The Mummy. And, and, you know, like I, I really fell in love with what she did. Also, you were one of the inspirations of, 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 of a gold medal. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. <laughs> but, uh, but yes, you know, like uh, we were talking that uh, we're... Um, missing like this type of uh, memorable routines that uh, you could enjoy and, and people is not uh, going to competition. So um, what do you think? Why it's, it's because you say like you love, you were in the sports aerobics and yeah. sports gymnastics also. You love both ways because they're completely different. But why people yeah. is not going to competitions right now? What do you think about it? I think maybe like what audience would go and watch and that's what they need to focus on is back in the days when we were competing, the whole fitness industry would go and watch because there were so many elements of the fitness aerobics industry involved. But now it's just, it's so elite that there's no real industry attached to it. And you're not gonna get the fitness or aerobics crowd. You're not gonna get the gymnasts because they're in a completely different sport it's kind of in its own lane and it needs to draw it needs to draw more from other industries and try and pull them in to make the sport way more accessible to other yeah. industries and to other sponsors and things no because we were watching this no that uh, we're uh, well attending the last competitions and it was empty so at the end there was no people watching the competition so no attractive at all it's supposed yeah. to be like this but um well, but I will say, I will say, it's called aerobics, and there's no aerobics in it anymore. So they need to, they need to bring that back. That's what the sport is based on. That's what it's called. Like we need to um, bring that element back into it. No, no, and 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 we were telling uh, even with the trainings we're doing just to promote and and to do like trainings elements and. Um, we lost of the essence, you know, like the kicks, the push-ups, all these uh, already get lost. Uh, 
just to try to do as many elements as you can and the more value you can do and then suddenly the, the, the memorable things that, because it's not about like, you remember Anthony, I, oh, of course I remember you, Anthony I can because of the kicks and the amazing elements you were doing, but I remember you because you were having so uh, much um, things that you, you fall in love with, with some arm movements and, and some, yeah. some movement. And even like the Spice Girls, Lady Gaga routine like this. So you can remember, and you don't remember about the element, you remember about the choreography. So that's, yeah. that's the, the pittiest thing that uh, you don't see right now, why competitors don't, doesn't spend time to do that. But yeah, well, I think like, uh, this is like what we were saying, no? this is the passion of our gymnast uh, athletes, uh, aerobic instructors yeah. that we were having in the nineties and not right now. Okay, Anthony. Thank you so much. But before oh, leaving, thank you. last words to, because later we will uh, disconnect also and, and I will try to show a piece of routine. Uh, later you will be laughing uh, <laughs> at your home. So uh, what is um, your opinion, your thing to say to the athletes that are competing not only in FIG or FISA or whatever, we don't care. We're about talking about everybody. What is your uh, goal? Um, uh, what is your, your thought about saying, okay, what do you th have to think for future when you do a choreography, when you compete, even it's FISA, uh, FIG, NIC, or IAF? That's your moment yeah. to tell to the yeah. competitors what is going on on your mind. I think, um, I think, Joe, what I loved about you as a competitor and what everyone can learn from you as a competitor, you are so driven and passionate and hungry about your sport and training. And that's why you became 20 times world champion. And if I, if I could do my time over again from when I was 16, I wish that I had your drive and your passion and your love for it. And you gave it absolutely everything. And that's why you had the success you did. So I think if an athlete was living, if an athlete was watching now and saying, what should I do to become champion is give it everything. No distractions. When you fall, you get back up. When you train, you go 100%. Don't have too many distractions. Try not to lose focus. Just stay tunnel vision focused. Have have you, Jonathan, as, as inspiration. And I think that will lead to success for athletes, ultimately. Don't be like me because I was like, <laughs> competition, party, dancing, nightclub, Sydney. <laughs> I love because you say one thing and, and it was tunnel vision also, like uh, Angela McMillan was saying, uh, big kisses to her also, that was saying big that, uh, you know, like uh, also like uh, tunnel vision, no, like no distractions at all. And, yeah. So I was a little bit, I was, I was like this. <laughs> yeah, but you know, like also you have to party a little because if not, there is no way you can continue for so long there. So um, thank you so much. I appreciate so much because even what I said to, to Angela that uh, sometimes you were in 98 in, in uh, Sao Paulo, it was, no? Uh, in yeah. Brazil. Um, maybe you didn't know, but you know, like I was like, Okay, take care because you know, like, <laughs> and people is laughing because right now, like, like you know, like twenty five years later, you know, like you're telling, but you know, like I could see perfectly. Even I, you know, I, you know, I, I remember even when you you broke your your ankle because I was like, okay, let's gonna see what he's doing because this guy is so good. You know, I was not a skilled guy. I was like, okay, I I want to do that. I was training, you know, like not not nine months, but you know, like the full year just to get it. So uh, uh, thanks so much because uh, well you were an inspiration for me. And also, like I said to you, you were an inspiration for a gold medal in 2000. Uh, thanks so much because uh, it's a pleasure. You know that I have you in my deepest part of my heart, you know, thank you so much. Thank and you, And I hope that competitors and athletes can learn a little bit from the legends. As we said, this is a league of the legends. So thank you so much, Anthony, for spending a little time with us. We will have a thank little you, more from your 99 routine. So let's <laughs> see if I can uh, succeed. Thank you so much. Uh, big kisses thank to everybody so much, there. Joe. Big and, kisses. Uh, we stay tuned. Big love. Thank you so bye, much. Bye. Big bye. kisses. Bye. Bye. So we just uh, saying goodbye to Anthony. Uh, thanks so much for staying there. You know, I love you so much. Uh, hope that Patsy Tierney is going to join soon. 
because I know she's uh, so busy, but of course she's an icon and legend also from aerobics from Australia. So thank you so much. Uh, also Sue Stanley. So we're trying to have you the best uh, uh, here every Sunday. If it won't be Sunday anyway, we will try to bring you the new and the best and the most incredible athletes around the world. And of course, we have the whole year, so no worries. If you are not next month, we will try to focus and to check that everything is working good for next. So uh, thank you so much, Anthony Iken from Australia. I will send you everything and you will have also the diploma from Aerobic Point Five. And of course, thanks to Venturelli to help us uh, to this amazing present for these champions because right now we are creating the League of Champions. So uh, thanks so much, everybody. Gracias a todos por estar allí. Vamos a empezar un poquito la coreografía con Anthony Aiken, okay, eh, que ya hemos dicho que bueno, si la entrevista no permite de poder realizar la coreografía, yo voy a estar allí para al menos llevaros un poquito los recuerdos de esa coreografía de 1999 con Anthony Aiken, okay, de Anthony Aiken. Así que muchos besos a todos, gracias por estar allí, Claudia, Marcela, Silvana, Lidia, todos los que estáis allí, muchísimas gracias por estar allí. Nos vemos la semana que viene. We see you next week with Fred Weather from New Zealand, uh, the amazing Flintstone that uh, he created one of the memorable, the most memorable routines in the world and the story of aerobics. So don't miss it because we will learn a little bit more from him. And remember, we will have later Olga Cardoso from Brazil and Gracie Kirch from Brazil also. So this uh, month of June uh, will be amazing. So thanks so much. Uh, gracias a ti, Flor, a todos los que habéis conectado. Eh, cada domingo sabéis que tenéis el vídeo en IGTV, así que siempre podéis tener la conversación allí. Thank you so much. Merci beaucoup. Uh, arigato kozaimasu. <laughs> Nos vemos la semana que viene. We see you. Hasta luego. Chao.